While it may seem like I spend all of my time talking about and using Python, and that is largely true to an extent, I do dabble with other languages occasionally. And every now and then I come across a feature that I really like and really wish that Python had. One of these features comes from a language called Rust, where you could write tests within your documentation to ensure that not only the code works correctly, but that your documentation is correctly written. Now this is part of the standard functionality of Rust and something you're actively encouraged to do. What I didn't know is that Python indeed actually already has this feature in the standard library. And on top of that, it's had it for more than two decades. This module is called doc test and you could probably imagine both in the name and the description I just gave what it does. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can write tests in your documentation, but we're also gonna be talking about how you can incorporate that in your unit tests as well. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's bring our tests into our documentation. So I already have an example on the screen here of a string to ball utility. And what this does is it takes the value of a string and then converts that into some sort of falsy or truthy uh, value, depending on a few extra characteristics, or it can handle a few more cases. So we have false, f and zero, all of these will return false, and true, t and one, all of these return true, and it would do that in, in any case. And then we have this value error if something else is provided and so it can't reasonably um, convert it you could set this to just be true because it's probably a truthy value but i needed to do that because i need to show something in particular and we'll see that we have this doc string here and this is done in numpy doc i do quite like numpy doc you don't have to use numpy doc but it does owe itself um to this in particular because the example section normally relies on you using this syntax and this syntax will get converted into code blocks in the documentation and this is what doc tests looks for when it's looking for these uh, calls so these three arrows if you don't know uh, what come up if you open the python interpreter so you've got these three arrows here so this is saying that on an input line you would call string to to, to ball and if you were to call it with a true value it would return true uh, and we could just do just quickly uh, ball say one is true. So this return value here is what is there. Uh, string to ball false would equal false, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what isn't on here at the moment is how you could do tracebacks because I wanted to talk about that a bit more specifically. Uh, so we do have this raise value error down here. If we were to create another example, uh, string to ball, and then we would pass hello world into here because the way it looks for tracebacks is quite a specific syntax. So it will look for this first line in a traceback block here, and then the AI is gonna fill it in. So you could just do this dot, 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 so you don't have to do the full stack because you can never know. And then you have the actual error that would occur. So the error type and then the error value in full, that would be uh, returned. And it does need to be in this syntax for doc test to be able to pick it up. You can run these tests in multiple ways. So you can run them manually or you can run them in test suites. I'll talk about doing them manually first. Uh, so you can uh, do if name equals main, import doc test, and you do doc test dot test mod. And this will test the entire module. And now if we run pi carbara, I just that's what I just named this little uh, uh, package I've got, and utils, there is no output at all. And that means that everything was fine and everything passed. If we change this to true, which it shouldn't be because false shouldn't equal true, it will now return an error saying that the, uh, the failed example was this, it expected true but got false. And now we can see, oh, my documentation is wrong. I need to change this to be false. If you do want the output in all situations, then you can do pi uh, that and then pass dash v to it and now it will say uh, all the tests that it tried to do and it will say they're all okay and then it will say that they all passed. Uh, so if you wanted to see the output you just pass dash v to the script with this test mod in it and it will work fine. If you wanted to run this just in a script for whatever reason and you wanted to see the output you can actually print this and you'll get uh, let's see, utils. and it will print a test results object with the number of failed tests and the number of attempted tests. So there were three in total that were attempted, these three examples here, and then zero of them failed. If you don't want to use test mod, or if you want to test 
specifically a function, then you could do doc uh, test dot run uh, doc string examples, and we'll get rid of this for now. Uh, you pass the function, and then you have to pass all the globals, or at the very least enough globals that you could just pass all the globals in. And now when you do that, again, it will do the same thing. If there is a failure, then it will tell you, it will give you the expected and then what it got. Uh, you can't print anything out of that though. Uh, so if you were to try and print, it just always returns none. Uh, or this says it always returns any. But if I did a print like this, we'll see we get a red underline saying that it doesn't ever return a value. If you wanted to run these dot tests in unit tests, you could do quite easily. I'm going to show you how to do it in both the unit test module and in PyTest. Spoiler alert, doing it in PyTest is way easier than doing it in unit test. Uh, so I've got this test.py file that I've created off camera, and I've also added a dunder init.py just to make the package a proper package. If we open this, uh, we import doc test and we import unit test. We then import the individual modules from the package. And then I'm just doing some extra type checking stuff just so I can make it a bit clearer what it's doing. And then we have this def load test function here that is called automatically if the file uh, that unit.test or uh, also unit test domain is called in sees that load test is a part of it. So you have this test loader here, the test suite here, and this pattern that I don't really know what it does and we also don't use, so that's fine. I don't use unit test, I use PyTest mainly. Uh, but you just need to add some extra tests to the test suite. And dot test actually has this dot test suite helper class um, to help you do that. So all you need to do is provide the module and then it'll add all the dot tests in that module. And you need to do that for every module. I did originally, or I was originally planning to do this a lot more dynamically, having something that could scan a package and find all the modules. But for some reason that's not working today, but it doesn't really matter that much. The intent of this is probably a bit clearer anyway. <laughs> so if we run this using pi and then test.py, we get uh, three tests ran in 0.02 seconds, and we can see that all three pass. Now it does do a single test per function, so it's not a single test per test. If you have multiple uh, tests within a single function, then they will all be run as part of the same test, and if one of them fails, the whole test will fail. So if I do true here, we'll see that we get a failure here and that the other two passed. Uh, so that is that. If you wanted to do the same thing in PyTest, all you would need to do is PyTest double dash doc test uh, modules. And PyTest is smart enough to go through, it actually uses the doc test API under the hood, but it will go through all the modules that are currently loaded and it will look for all of the doc tests and it will run them all in the same way. So you see that unit, uh, the utils file only has the one test. And if one uh, fails, then it will give you the standard doc test error as well. It also gives you some line numbers here, which is interesting. I've never seen PyTest do that before, but it will give you a failure if it fails. And then obviously if it runs, as you saw, it passes. Let me know in the comments if you plan to use this in your own projects. And while I've opened that can of worms, let me know what your favorite documentation standard is. Mine, as I said before, is NumPyDoc, but if you have a different favorite, then let me know. If you want to see all the other ways that Python is awesome, I do have a series dedicated to it called Python is Awesome, believe it or not. That'll be in the end cast for you to watch, but I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.